The first cause of a hard heart that is explicitly mentioned in the Quran is to avoid or to minimize or to ignore the remembrance of Allah, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To not be involved in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pro- Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, فَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from my dhikr, from my remembrance, shall live a miserable and wretched life. The dhikr of Allah, the dhikr of Allah is the primary nourishment of the heart, the spiritual heart. When you cut off the nourishment of the heart, then the heart will wither and dry away. Just like if you don't drink water, your body will die, you will die of dehydration. Similarly, if you don't have dhikr of Allah, the heart will also become ossified, become stale, become solidified. And this is of the greatest causes of the hardness of the heart. Another symptom that causes this disease, and is also mentioned in the Quran, is to not follow the laws of Islam. To not care about the laws of Islam. Allah says in the Quran, فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ لَعَنَّاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيَةً Because they broke Allah's covenant. Allah's covenant means Allah's law, Allah's sharia. They didn't follow Allah's sharia. We cursed them and we made their hearts hard. Notice a direct causal linkage. If you're not praying regularly, what do you expect other than to have a hard heart? If you're not doing your deeds that you're supposed to do, if you're not living the lifestyle of a Muslim, well then obviously you are fueling. Of course, this is a symptom and it is also a cause. It's a catch-22. The hard heart causes you to be irreligious. Being irreligious makes your heart even harder. It's a circle. It's a loop because you are feeding a dead heart. And how is the dead heart going to get fed when there is no food, there is no spirituality to feed it? And so ignoring the sharia, turning away from the commandments of Islam, not caring about the salah, not caring about the haram, not caring about the sins that we're doing. This is a problem that causes the heart to be hard. And Allah specifically mentions this in the Quran. That their hearts have rusted because of what they are doing. Notice what they do, the hearts become rusted. The ran here, this is a result of sins. When you commit sins to the point that you ignore, that you don't even care about the sins anymore, what happens? Your heart becomes hard. Yet another symptom, yet another cause, excuse me, of having the heart hard. Yet another virus, if you like, that makes the heart hard is to follow every single bodily desire to make sure every wish of yours is fulfilled. Why? Because there is a tension between the body and the spirit. There's always a tension. And when you overfeed the body, the spirit does not, is not given the attention it deserves. When you overindulge the body, then the spirit is not given the attention it deserves. And that's why, by the way, in Ramadan, in fasting, we purposely cut off from the body. We purposely minimize food and drink. We minimize sexuality. Why? So that the spirit or the ruh, it is increased a bit. So when you take care of every single whim, every single desire, every single urge you have of the body, then what's going to happen? The ruh will become neglected. And so following your desires... And by the way, even halal desires, if they are taken to an extreme, it will be harmful to the body. Even halal, too much of the mubah, our scholars say, too much of the neutral, it becomes makruh. It becomes discouraged, maybe even haram if it leads you to commit sins. So following every bodily urge. And the final cause that will mention it again, this is a short khutbah, we cannot go into all the details. The final cause that will be mentioned is too much entertainment. Too much frivolity, too much wasting of time. This too is one of the primary causes that results in the heart becoming hard. Our Prophet wasallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَكَثْرَةُ الضَّحِكُ I warn you against too much laughing. Now laughing is not haram. Our Prophet would smile, smile dozens of times in the day. And on occasion he would laugh so much that you could see his teeth. Yes, laughing is not haram. 
But what did our Prophet ﷺ say? I caution you, I warn you against kathratul dahik. Not laughing, too much laughing. Why? فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةَ الضَّحِكِ تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبِ Too much laughing causes the heart to die. Too much frivolity. Too much wasting time. And in our times, Wallahi, the best example of this is the television. There is no question that absorbing this set in front of you for hours on day is one of the greatest symptoms, one of the greatest causes that will cause the heart to become dead. That you literally dull your mind, you dull your body, you dull your ruh, and you sit there and you just do absolutely nothing other than giggle and watch the haram and listen to the haram. No doubt this is going to cause a psychological effect. And what will that effect be? The number one effect, the hardness of the heart. Kathratul dahi. This is exactly what is the modern equivalent. And literally what is it called in English? Killing time, murdering time. That's not something that we should be doing. And yet doing this will cause yet another problem of the heart. And that is the hardness of the heart. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the hardness of the heart, one of the worst problems about it is that every person can and is affected by it. From the greatest scholar to the layman worshiper. Simply having knowledge is not enough of a cure. Because here we have the Bani Israel, they saw with their own eyes what none of us have seen. And they saw all of these miracles. And yet still what happened? ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكُ Your hearts became hard after this. Inshallah, in the second khutbah, we'll talk about some of the cures, some of the ways that we can make sure that the, that the heart remains soft. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِوَرَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنَ عَظِيمُ وَنَفَعْنِي وَيَّاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَذِكْرِ الْحَكِيمُ أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد. So we talked about some of the symptoms. We talked about some of the causes. And it is now imperative that we talk about some of the cures. Some of the vaccinations that we can take to make sure that our heart remains soft. Or if we find that our heart is hard, how then do we make it soft? And again, because of the time of the khutbah, we can only summarize. I'll try to mention at least six or seven, and there are many more than these. Number one, number one, if somebody has a weak heart in the physical world, what does he do? He monitors himself. Monitors himself. Checks his blood pressure, has a glucose problem, check his glucose. This is what you do. If you have a disease, you will make sure what is the status of the disease. And therefore, if you find yourself having the symptoms of a hard heart, well then you had better start monitoring the disease. Monitor it. See what state your heart is in. See what is your pulse. See how strong or how weak. See what is the strength of the heart and how weak is the heart and how soft is the heart. And of course this is done by many ways. This is not the time to do that. But of the ways to do this is you look at your own religious life. You look at your own how much do you do of Islam? How much is Allah Azza wa Jalla part of your life? You look at how much you remember Allah. Basically you look at how religious you are. Because no doubt the more religious you are the more it will be shown in your actions. So one of the pulses of the, of the state of the heart is to see how is your own personal religiosity? What is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often do you think of Allah? How often do you turn to Allah? All of these things need to be monitored. Just like the sick person, he monitors his health. Just like the sick person will check his blood, check the blood pressure, check this, do that. Similarly, the one who sees these symptoms, th that person had better start monitoring. And this is of the first ways to start keeping this disease in check. Number two, extra nawafil. Extra deeds, and this is if you are praying the fard, if you're not praying the fard, then no doubt, before you get to the nawafil, you have to make your fard solid. Our Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that nothing a servant does can draw him closer to me than doing the fard obligatory deeds. <coughs> nothing a servant does can draw him closer to me than doing the obligatory deeds. This is the most important. Then he said, and then the servant continues to draw closer to me through the nafil, through the superrogatory, through the extra good deeds. And so increasing your actions of worship, all actions of worship will affect the heart. Number three, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We already mentioned that not doing dhikr causes the heart to become hard. And therefore the converse applies, doing dhikr. Being immersed in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is of the best ways to make the heart become whole and pure. And in fact, Allah mentions this explicitly in the Quran. Verily, through the dhikr of Allah, do the hearts find tranquility. The tranquility of the heart, the softness of the heart. And that is because the dhikr of Allah is the primary food for the soul. The dhikr of Allah is the primary food that the soul is nourished on. And if we supply our soul this food, it will alhamdulillah become healthy. And if we deprive it of its food, then it will become hard. And therefore every one of us needs to see how much dhikr am I doing? How much subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar am I saying in a day? These are the primary adhkar. After the salawat, the adhkar. Before going to sleep, the adhkar. Waking up in the morning, the adhkar. This is of the most important ways that we make our hearts soft. And that is to immerse it in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.